Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Kerem Nazaria. Um, <coughs> yes, and we uh, are in the process of changing our name, so uh, we will be known as Cadence or Cadence Minerals. So as just pointed out, we are a investor, strategic investor and cornerstone uh, partner in the development of uh, what we'll call strategic metals, principally lithium, that is sort of fueling our, the green revolution as it stands today. So, and why I say lithium is lithium, we, key, we focus on, on, on lithium. It's the key to the revolution that is occurring today within the electric vehicle market um, across the board. We, have, uh, we believe this is the right market because there's a very strong global demand for, the, uh, for this type of material, lithium carbonate. Um, we expose ourselves to a variety of investments, um, basically, because if you look at historically and you look at the development of mineral assets, uh, that, you know, there's a, a chance, about less than 2% chance of these assets ever coming to production. So we utilise the experience that we have within our board. My background is as an engineering geologist and a mining engineer. Um, the other two members of the board, particularly Andrew Suckling, was uh, one of the partners of Osprey, Osprey Management, which at its height was worth about $9 billion. So we're taking both our uh, technical expertise um, uh, and our financial markets expertise to understand which projects are really going to deliver and come to market and, and fuel this revolution. So today, um, we've invested somewhere in the region of uh, 17 to 18 million pounds uh, into various assets. Um, and that's worth around 40, well, 39 uh, million pounds uh, as of today. Um, by the way, that's roughly, that market cap's a bit lower. So it's, we're basically asked, backed by our publicly listed assets. We do have joint ventures, so the market's not really taking into account of the value of those joint ventures as well. So we look at projects that are low cost base um, and have giant resources. So they are what we will call um, assets that um, ha have have uh, strategic advantages that can't be replicated. You can replicate technology across assets, but if the asset has got the right grade, um, the right size, and that company's got a unique ac ac access to that asset, no one's really going to be able to compete with it. Um, and there's, some, there's a classic quote from, from the film we sell that saw, uh, Saudi oil minister. I'm not saying that electric vehicles will replace oil, um, and certainly the figures that we talk about here is penetration rates of electric vehicles of around sort of uh, up to 9%, which is still relatively small. As I mentioned, uh, the, uh, you know, the team, uh, both myself and Andrew, are probably uh, m most heavily involved uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Adrian is, uh, Fairborn is a, uh, also a fund manager, and he adds his expertise to it as well. <coughs> oh, I think the map's faded there. <laughs> right, so that was meant to have the map of the world. <laughs> and it doesn't seem to be there. I don't know what's happened. Okay, so, uh, right. Uh, these are, are essentially our assets. Um, we, and they're not numbered either, so that's really great. Uh, okay, so the, the primary ones we're going to talk about are the Sonora Lithium Project on the far left-hand side. That is in Mexico. Um, and the Cinevec Lithium Project, which is in the Czech Republic, uh, which are those, uh, these two. Our ownership between them is between 19 and 41% uh, uh, in Sonora because we have a joint venture in there, and, and Cinevec we have 21%. The other ones which are sort of, uh, and, and those two are in what we call the pre-feasibility and feasibility stage. The pre-feasibility stage is, is when you're doing an accuracy of around 25% in terms of your engineering studies, um, and then when you get to feasibility you're at about 10% accuracy. So they're the most advanced up the development curve. The other assets um, are in uh, what we'll call exploration stage, so they're very early in, the, in their development. I'd like to say that we have invested and invested in Sonora and invested in uh, Cinevet Lithium when they were at the re uh, resource definition stage. So we stick with companies all the way through, uh, certainly up to feasibility stage, and we then look at what we can do in terms of exit strategies. <coughs> So strategic advantages, I've said this before, unique access to a high-grade mineral resource and reserve delivering costs in the lower half of the cost curve. Um, and this is a, a thanks to Benchmark Minerals, an excellent group. This is uh, why we're really excited. Um, this is owned until 2020. This is committed expenditure uh, by the major battery manufacturers in terms of cell production. At the moment, we've got about 28 gigawatt, gigawatts of hours uh, of, of cell production, battery cell production. Majority of that's in China. This is increasing, um, you know, over to 500% to 174 gigawatt hours by 2020. It does not include 
the other Tesla giga gigafactories that people mentioned and the North Vault gigafactory that's been mentioned. This alone shows the commitment of somewhere in the region to 25 to 30 billion dollars of investment in the battery, in the cell, in battery cells. And, and it's not in laptops, um, it, it, you know, it's in electric vehicles. Um, the majority of this will be in China. Uh, the exceptions to that is the Tesla gigafactory in Nevada and the um, uh, and, and a small Pol uh, Polish uh, 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 battery, battery it works in Poland. So you can see that the, 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 the demand is there and you can see now we talk about uh, the product that everyone talks about is lithium carbon equivalent um, and this is what the compound that everyone uses in or pretty well everyone uses in their uh, battery manufacturing, car battery. We're talking about a level of about 185,000 tonnes today at this moment in time. It's a relatively small market, about 1.3 billion. And that's growing to around you know, 600, uh, some people call it 700,000 tonnes per annum in 2025. By 2025, this is the forecast by Morningstar. So that's growing from one to around uh, 4.5, 4.6 billion uh, in terms of market size. To put it in perspective, although I've put 11% CJR there, which is 11% growth per annum, that's the largest growth that, you, that has been seen in the last 100 years in terms of a commodity. Uh, you'll have to go back to pre-World War I um, to, to even, even see some levels of growth. Even the Chinese boom that occurred uh, recently uh, up until around 2010 had growth rates of about 5 to 6%. Uh, Morningstar's forecast is 16% growth. So there's certainly the demand. and. Uh, in, and, and do we have enough supply? First of all, there is enough lithium resources and reserves around the world. That is not a problem. The problem lies with identifying the ones that will come to production, that will deliver into this, into this curve, um, and those that really are just not going to make it because they don't have the right asset um, and the right team. Uh, so, you know, we see, uh, you know, this is a, 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 certainly a deficit. Uh, some people might say that there's a, it's a balanced market or will become a balanced market. But certainly, there is a deficit. We forecast a deficit over the coming years. I say 2025 is a bit artificial because um, a lot of the assets that would fill that gap in 2025 haven't even published their pre-feasibility study, so we don't know what tonnage they're going to be producing. But fundamentally, we see a defi deficit, and therefore, that will certainly affect prices. Now, historically, prices have been around the uh, $6,500 per tonne. Uh, there are really two products here. The uh, battery grade uh, product is the red line, which is 99.5, and the technical grade is 98.5. Technical grade is used in ceramics, uh, greases, etc., like that. Historically, it's been around six and a half thousand dollars a ton, and certainly the pre-feasibility studies and everyone's been using six and a half thousand dollars a ton. This has now moved recently into the area of, of, of sort of fourteen thousand dollars a ton, and that's what the long-term contracts have been done at. We see, uh, and, then, uh, and then in the longer term, this is from Deutsche Bank, uh, around $9,500 a tonne. I'm one minute left. <laughs> right. So we've got several assets, and uh, I just want to show that they, this is the Sonora Lithium. This has performed incredibly well. Well, reasonably well. It's about 26% return, and it's coming into construction or delivering in 2019. We have, uh, and it's in the lower cost quartile, um, as you can see with the black... Um, uh, the black highlight is in the lower cost quartile. We also have Cinevet Lithium. This has been our star performer at around 474% uh, return that we've managed, uh, and that represents roughly half of our resource. Um, and then we have two, other, um, time, two others which are both have performed well, although smaller part of our, our overall portfolio, 87 and 300% return. Um, and this is showing that effectively both of our assets are undervalued comparative to other assets in the market and there's substantial upside for them about three to five times we believe. So again these graphs don't seem to be coming out. Um, our relative performance if you wanted to diversify across all lithium assets has been much better. They've got about 150, we're actually around 300. So our you, know, you could diversify but our selection method and what we've delivered is much better than the average uh, lithium index. And that's the summary, and I'm out of time. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you.